Welcome to my tutorial on creating a snow globe. Let's get started. First, delete the, the default cube by pressing the delete key. Next, let's add a new object. Go to add mesh and select circle. Set the number of vertices to 16 for a simple base. After that, switch to edit mode by pressing tab. Now, press E to extrude and create another row of vertices. Next, select the inner circle by holding Alt and clicking on it. After that, press Ctrl F and choose Grid Fill to fill in the circle nicely. Next, switch to the front view by pressing 1 on your numpad. Now, to extrude the entire mesh, press to select all vertices and then E to extrude. To resize the selected vertices, Press S for scale, and adjust as needed. Continue extruding and scaling until you achieve the desired shape. Once you're satisfied, press Tab to exit edit mode. To smooth the edges, add a subdivision surface modifier. Finally, right-click on the model and select Shade Smooth to give it a polished, smooth appearance. Now, let's re-enter edit mode by pressing tab and start adding more details. To add loop cuts, press Ctrl R. You can adjust the position of the loop cuts as needed, and to resize them, simply press S for scale, keep adjusting the shape until you're happy with the result. Once you're satisfied, exit edit mode by pressing tab. Now, Now, let's add a new object, press Ctrl A and choose UV Sphere to insert a sphere. Set the sphere to have 16 segments and 12 rings. Then, enter edit mode by pressing Tab. Select the bottom half of the vertices and delete them by pressing Delete. Next, delete the top vertex as well. Select the top loop of vertices, then press Ctrl F and choose Fill to cap the sphere. Now, move the vertices upwards to give it the correct spherical shape. This way, your model will consist only of quads, four-sided polygons, without any triangles. Using quads, four-sided polygons, instead of triangles is generally preferred in 3D modeling for several reasons. First, quads deform more predictably during animation, which helps maintain smoother, more natural results. 
Second, many modeling tools, like subdivision and loop cuts, work better with quads, ensuring cleaner and more efficient topology. Finally, quads are easier to manage and edit, especially when refining shapes or adding details, which makes the overall workflow more flexible. Once you've shaped the sphere, switch back to object mode by pressing tab. Now, let's shape the bottom part of the sphere to your desired design. Use the extrude tool by pressing E to create new geometry. You can add more details with loop cuts by pressing Ctrl R. To position the vertices, use the G key to grab and move them. Finally, adjust the size of the vertices with the S key for scaling. As the next step, let's add some thickness to the glass. Go to the Modifiers tab and add a Solidify modifier. This will give the sphere the thickness it needs to resemble real glass. Next, switch to the Shading workspace at the top of the screen. Select the base of the snow globe beneath the sphere and add a new material. Press Shift A to add an Image Texture node and open a wood texture. You can use any wood texture you like or find one online. I'll provide a link below the video if you prefer to purchase this one. Now, let's set up the UV map. It's important to place seams in a way that allows each part of the UV map to have an even amount of space, ensuring the texture won't get stretched. Select the edges where you want to make the cuts, press Ctrl E, and choose Mark Seam. This will help unwrap the model properly. Still in edit mode, Press A to select everything, then press U and choose Unwrap to generate the UV map. This will unwrap the selected object. Repeat the same process for the glass sphere. Select the sphere and add a new material. Rename the materials to wood for the base and glass for the sphere to keep things organized. Once both objects have their materials assigned, select them both and press Ctrl J to join them into a single object. Select the entire object and adjust its size using the S key to scale it to your liking. After that, Set up the camera by positioning it so that you get the perfect view of the snow globe.
If you notice any issues with the UV map, you can add another seam to ensure the map is evenly distributed. After adjusting the seams, check the UV stretch option in the UV editor to confirm that the texture is properly unwrapped. Ideally, all parts should be a solid blue color, which indicates that there's no stretching. Next, let's adjust the glass shader either as shown in the video or based on your own preferences. For example, a higher roughness value means less shine and less transparency. For glass, it's best to use a very low roughness value to achieve a more realistic, shiny and transparent look. Now, let's tweak the wood shader. If you have the Node Wrangler add-in enabled, you can press Ctrl-T to automatically add the Texture Coordinate and Mapping nodes. To enable Node Wrangler, go to Edit Preferences add-ons and search for it. If you don't have Node Wrangler, you can manually add the Texture Coordinate and Mapping nodes. Set the texture to Box Mode and increase the Blend value to hide the seams on the wood texture. Next, let's set up the PBR shader for the wood material. Connect the base color of the wood texture to the base color input of the PBR shader. Add a color ramp node between the texture and the roughness input. Adjust the values in the color ramp to control the glossiness of the wood to your liking. Before connecting the normal map, add a bump node and adjust the intensity so that the wood has subtle imperfections, making it look more realistic. As our next step, we'll model a snowflake to create a beautiful effect of detailed flakes falling inside the globe. Start by pressing Ctrl to add a new plane. Then, enter edit mode to begin modeling the snowflake. We'll use the same modeling methods as before. To move vertices, use the G key. For scaling, press S. To extrude, use the E key, and to add loop cuts, press Ctrl R. These tools will help you shape the snowflake into a beautiful design.
we'll model one-sixth of the snowflake for simplicity. If you copy a section of the snowflake using Alt-D, all copies will update simultaneously, which is great for maintaining consistency. You can position the individual parts correctly by rotating them using the R key before combining everything together. Once you are satisfied with the changes, combine the parts of the snowflake by pressing Ctrl J. In edit mode, select the hole in the snowflake and press F to fill it with a polygon. Then, select the entire mesh by pressing A and extrude it to give the snowflake some thickness. This will help create a more realistic and detailed appearance. In edit mode for the snow globe, select the inner ring of vertices by holding Alt and clicking. Then, by using the plus and minus keys on the numpad, you can quickly select more or fewer vertices. Once you've selected the top inner part of the globe, press Shift D to duplicate it, and then press P to choose separate selection. This will create an emitter, which is the object from which the snow will fall. Next, add a particle effect in the Particles tab. Set the number of frames in the render options to 250. Then, in the particle system settings under the render section, select object and choose the snowflake you modeled earlier as the object to be emitted. This will create a snowfall effect within your snow globe. Next, reduce the velocity normal parameter to a lower value to slow down the falling snowflakes. Additionally, adjust the gravity settings to make the flakes fall more gently. After that, select the snow globe and enable collision in the physics properties. This will ensure that the particles remain inside the snow globe, creating a realistic snowfall effect. Then, select the snowflake and go to the to material tab. Add a new material for the snowflake to give it a proper look. You can adjust the settings to achieve a soft, white appearance that resembles real snow. If you'd like to set up studio lighting for your scene, I have a special tutorial for that, link in the description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, if you prefer to skip the modeling process, you can purchase the finished 3D model, and the link will be available in the description below.